morning everyone it's miss reynolds and i'm back to read you another story this one is called how to bicycle to the moon to plant sunflowers it's a simple but brilliant plan in 24 easy steps by mordecai gerstein how it all began the full moon always looked to me like a big sad clown face I asked my parents why it was so sad. It's probably lonely, they said. Nothing lives there. That's when the idea came to me. I'm going to the moon, I said, to plant sunflowers and cheer it up. My parents laughed. How could you get there, they giggled. On your bicycle? And there he is, he's pointing at the sad moon and his parents are giggling. Hmm, why not on my bicycle? With a lot of serious thought, I secretly worked out a plan. I would be the first human to bicycle to the moon to plant sunflowers. The plan was simple, but brilliant. But with homework and soccer and violin and all the other stuff I had to do, I never had the time to carry it out. That's why I decided to write my plan down so someone else could try it. Maybe it'll be you. And there he is. He's making his plan with the moon watching on. The plan. Step one. Of course, you need a bicycle. I have a red one with three gears and yellow streamers on the ends of the handlebars. There's his cool bike. Step two. Next, you need to borrow about 2,000 used inner tubes. My Uncle Russell has a tire store. He'd loan them to you. Have the tubes delivered to a high grassy hill with two tall fat birch trees on top of it. There's his Uncle Russell and he's bringing all the tubes up the hill. Step 3A. Then get your best friend to help you weave the tubes together into one long rubber band. This should take a couple of weeks. I was going to ask my friend Shirley. So there he is. He says, Shirley, you are a true friend. And she says, I guess this is so boring. 3B. Tie the ends of the inner tube rubber band to the birch trees. There he is. He's singing and happy and she's grumbling. She's not enjoying this game. Next, get someone with a tractor to stretch the rubber band a mile down the hill and tie it to a huge oak tree at the bottom. You will have made a giant slingshot. And there he is. He's taking, he's getting it pulled and he's going, come on, come on, come on, come on. Can you imagine what that rubber band sounds like stretching? Number five. Now you need to find a pole about 25 feet long. My aunt has a flagpole that would be perfect. And she says, My third grade class gave this to me when I retired. So please don't lose it. And he says, I promise. You also need a ship's anchor. Tie the anchor to the top of the pole. Going to anchor in the deep sea? Nope, deep space. 7A. Next, go around your neighborhood asking everyone if they have old garden hoses. Most people have lots of them in their garages. And there he is. He's getting garden hoses and the guy says, you got a big lawn? Not really. 7B. Attach all the hoses together till, you're, till they're 238,900 miles long and wind them onto a gigantic spool. By the way, 238,900 miles is the distance to the moon. So there he is. He's winding them onto a huge spool. Oops, sorry. 8A. Then set the end of the flagpole into the inner tube slingshot and tie the nozzle end of the 238,900 miles of garden hose to the pole. Wait till the next full moon Carefully aim the flagpole at the moon and cut the inner tubes loose. 
This should make a really cool sound. Whoosh! The flagpole will be catapulted into the night sky. Watch it disappear with the hose spinning off the spool after it. Once the flagpole escapes Earth's gravity, it will just keep going all the way to the moon. There he is. It's nighttime and he's cutting it loose. Look at the moon's face. He sees the arrow coming at him. And he's going, what is going on? 9A. While the hose spins off into the sky, write a letter to NASA. That stands for the National Aeronautics and Space Agency, and they build rockets and explore outer space. It should read something like this. Dear NASA, I have a simple but brilliant plan to bicycle to the moon. Then you describe your plan. Would you please loan me a spacesuit size extra small for a few months? I promise to return it in good condition and give you a full report on my journey. Yours truly, and then you put your name in there. So there's the letter sample, and there he is mailing it to NASA, and he's still whistling, he's happy. 10A, now tie your family garden hose between the clothesline pole and a tree and start practicing riding your bike on it. If you fall off, get right back up. If your parents tell you bicycling on the hose is too dangerous, assure them that doing it in outer space will be safer. If you fall, you just float. So there he is, he's practicing and his mom's going Eek! And he's saying, I think I can, I think I can. And look, he's fallen off down here. And his parents are, his mom's begging him, please don't do this. And what's his dad saying? His dad's saying, you listen to me. And he is saying, What's he saying? He's saying, not to worry. 11A, in about three weeks, you and your entire neighborhood will hear a tremendous sound. What do you think that was? Run to the hose spool. If it has stopped spinning and the hose is stretched off into the sky, you'll know your anchor has hit the moon. Tug on the hose. You'll feel the moon tugging back on the other end. So there he is. Look, they're here, the boing. And then, look, he's, he's so excited. And the moon has it stuck in his nose. Around this time, you'll come home from school to hear your mother say, there's a package for you from NASA. Tear open the package. You should find a letter on top. Dear, and then your name. We don't know if your plan will work, but it's worth trying. If the enclosed space suit fits, you may borrow it. Good luck, sincerely, Nassau. So there he is. He's got his letter and his mom's like, he says, wow. And his mom says, Nassau? 12B. Hopefully the space suit will fit perfectly. At this point, your mother will realize your plan is serious and tell you that you can't go. Tell her, mom, I promise I'll be really careful. It's too risky, she'll say, her eyes brimming with tears. There he is in his spacesuit, and he says, how do I look? <gasps> and then he says, she says, what does she say? She says, no. And he says, but, please, mom, just this once. Well, she'll say, let me discuss it with your father. If your parents are like mine, so he's saying, please. And then he's going, please, 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 please. And she's going, pss, 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 pss. hmm. Do you think they'll let him go? This means yes. Remember to pack sunflower seeds, compost, and a trowel, along with your normal supplies. On a bright day, when the moon looks like a pale silver nickel, attach the earth end of the hose to a faucet. Turn on the faucet. Put your bike on the hose. Oh, and I forgot to say, you should have these special clamps I designed to keep your bike on the hose. Three, two, one, pedal! There he goes, heading to the moon. And look at everybody's there to say goodbye. Your mother will be sobbing, your father will shake your hand, and everyone else will say goodbye and take care. Start pedaling. In a few minutes, you will see your whole town below you. Sounds will drift up. 
screen doors, dogs, lawnmowers, and even scraps of conversation. If a cloud drifts into your path, pedal right into it. The world will turn white till you come out the other side. As you get higher, you'll probably pass eagles and other birds. You'll see oceans sparkling far below. There he goes. Did you see him? He went through a cloud. He's pedaling hard, I bet. That would be a hard pedal. At lunchtime, take a break. Have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich washed down with chocolate milk. This will be your last solid earth food. From now on, it's all space food. Nourishing flavored glop squirted through a straw in your space helmet. Look how high he is. He's up by an airplane. When the sun starts to slide behind the earth, trillions of stars will fill the sky more than you have ever could have imagined. With the moon glowing like a huge nightlight, crawl into your sleeping bag and get some rest. Look at him. He's hanging off the rope in a bag. In the morning, squeeze some space breakfast into your helmet straw and pedal on. When you get beyond gravity, you should easily keep your speedometer at 500 miles an hour. You'll feel like you're standing still. Space will be very quiet. The loudest sounds will be your heart beating, your stomach gurgling, and the electric buzzing hum of your nervous system. You will sound like a space satellite. You'll see lots of them. Look at all the satellites you can see. Just keep pedaling. There will be no day or night, up or down. When you get tired, you can float beside your bike to rest, or you can swim around it to exercise your arms. The Earth will be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. It will keep getting smaller while the moon grows bigger. When the moon looks bigger than the Earth, you'll know you're almost there. After a while, you may look back at the Earth and feel lonely. The moon will no longer have a face. It will just be this vast, empty place in front of you. You may start to wonder why you came. You may even start to cry. If you do, your tears will float around in your helmet like transparent marbles. Don't turn back. You're almost there. Keep pedaling. Did you see his tears? Finally, you will see the pole your hose is tied to with its anchor stuck into the moon. Pedal down and float off your bike. You will be the first human to bicycle to the moon. Everything will be white except the shadows, which are black. It will look like a coloring book that hasn't been colored yet. You will do amazing leaps and somersaults. Look at him, he's so happy. Take the sunflower seeds and compost out of your pack. Did you remember the trowel? Dig a bunch of little holes, put a sunflower seed in each one and cover it with compost. Turn on the nozzle of the hose. Did you remember to turn on the faucet before you left? The water will come out looking, I think, something like jello. Pat the water onto the compost and mix it in. There he is. He's planting his seeds. That's all there is to it. You've planted sunflowers on the moon. You might want to gather a few moon rocks as souvenirs for your family and friends. The ride back will seem a lot faster. I don't know why, it just always does on any trip. When you get back, you will probably be greeted as a hero. There will be TV cameras, interviews, and all that kind of stuff. The first thing I would want is a big slice of pepperoni pizza. There he is, he's heading home, and there's the celebration. Then just keep watering the seeds and watching the moon through the telescope. I'll be watching too. And I'm sure that one day sooner or later, thanks to my plan, we will see sunflowers on the moon. There you go. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.